I'm done reading The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Junato Petrus. So going into this, I was excited about reading it. I heard a lot of great things about it and Jerry at Onyx Pages, they did an interview with Junato Petrus. I was super excited about reading it. When I got the book, I read like the first page and I was just kind of like thrown off by... I don't understand, like... Uh, mm. I mean, I appreciate the ability to put the Trinidadian accent on the page. I appreciate that, but it was just like, this don't ring, this don't, I, I mean, everybody's family, everybody's Trinidadian family is different, so how we talk is not necessarily, we gotta have our own little idiosyncrasies as Trinidadian people and how we talk. But it was just like, the moment I read, you fast and arrow and sensual and mango. Queenie tells me, so Audrey, please put some molasses in your feet for this walk. It ain't supposed to go fast. She says as we walk through the woods, I is crying so hard, my body is shudder and breath and wet with tears. My glasses fog up and I wipe them with my shirt so I can see through them and see the back of my grandma, my guide. My heart feeling like it get bust up for calling somebody mother a jagabat. See, I didn't like this first paragraph. I didn't like, I don't know, maybe that's just how Queenie's grandmother talks with the yafas and arrow and sensual and mango. I guess that's poetry, I think, or whatever. But like, I just, I, that just, like, initially when I first read that, I was just like, that turned me off from reading it. And Sajid at Books Are My Social Life, I'm guessing that he read this first paragraph. And this is what kind of threw him to as well. And, like, he said he skipped through and he read some other parts. And he was just, like, a little taken aback by that. It was the accent that was getting to him. And it was just, like, same for me. Like, I got your fast. Okay. That's, that's a good start. And then it's like, as you kept reading, and it's like, and arrow and sensual and mango but i'm not accustomed to Trinidadian people having this kind of sentence like i understand your fast and when i when when it started with your fast i was like okay so what's the what's the tea what's the drama what's going on because somebody in somebody else's business and i thought it was going to start with a little you know a little Trinidad bacchanal something like that you know that's not what it was it just went into i don't know it's just uh, that was a problem and that for me was kind of like my problems with the book is Audrey's chapters and her talking and her eyes crying and I was just like mm. it's the eyes that kept getting me with Audrey she was like I is crying I is doing this I is doing that but I kept reading and the more I read the more I was kind of like okay 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 I the story's really great Audrey's still mm, her chapters are a little draining but seeing past how the accent was conveyed I had to reprogram my mind a little bit to be like I'm going to cut the, the, the little is's that she keeps throwing into these sentences because we'll talk like, I'm crying so hard. My body's shuddering, I'm breathing. And that's, uh, that's another thing too I realized was the shuddering and breathing and wet. And it's just like a lot of the ands and ands. I'm like, you could have just put a comma. I do feel, because I really shouldn't be critiqued because I did enjoy the book. I loved it. I keep, I'm like going in already on the, but that was like a big part. Like that, the accent how it was conveyed and starting to read it. And it's just like the accent hit me off the gate. And it was just like, I kept critiquing the accent in my head because I'm, being that I grew up in Trinidad for such a significant point, portion of my life. I have my Trinidadian accent. I know how it, how it goes, how people talk. I'm still hearing people with a Trinidadian accent talking to this day. The sentence structures weren't really ringing true as true Trinidadian. It felt a little overwrought. But then I also kind of took it as maybe the reason why it was written in this way is because from my understanding, I, I believe Jonata Petrus is a poet as well. I was listening to a podcast and they actually mentioned one of her poems and I think they read out that too. And she's written a lot of poetry into this book, a lot of beautiful words, a lot of beautiful poetry. So I figured some of that is integrated into the story and how it's written and how Audrey's accent is conveyed. At times it really rang true the accent and I really, and that's not what this review is about it's not just about the accent but that is something i really have to drive home because it was something that i it's 
it wasn't something that I could get past or get away from or completely get through because it was just, it just kept, like, every time Audrey's chapter come up, came up, it just kept coming and it just kept making me think about her accent and how I, how I feel like it could have been written better. I don't have all the answers for that, but as far as I know is we could have dropped some of the is is If we're going to really go in on trying to make the accent the accent, we'd have to really listen to people that really talk with a Trinidadian accent, like, really break it down put in the syllables, make the scent, make the words that convey how we as Trinidadian people speak, how we say things, how it sounds. And the mother thing, because if we're going to do the I is, then how is mother not spelt more to sound like mother? You know, mother, your mother, your father and them, and stuff like that. Like, oh gosh, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm terrible because I'm just like, ah. It's a great book, but also like, mm, I'm having a problem with the, with, with the way Audrey was talking in this book. I'm no expert. And then also, I don't know, Junata Petrus, how her family interaction, what that is like. So she's basically conveying how they speak. It's just not how my family would speak or how a lot of the people around me as Trinidadians would speak. But aside from that, I'll probably most likely still come back to it anyway. The Stars and the Blackness Between Them is a beautiful coming of age story with a lot of queerness, a lot of sapphic queerness. Like, I loved, I, I loved it. I loved the beauty of it. I loved the beauty of the writing, even despite the accent i still love the beauty of it i just still love how much it encapsulated i think youth of this time which i have a back and forth on that too a little bit where at times it felt oh yeah this feels i i, I can't really speak because i'm not a teenager in this time period but from what i'm seeing of teenagers from whether it's from social media or just in real life it still does evoke like an authenticity to teenagers of now. There were times when I was reading it and I was like, uh -huh, do, te do teenagers really talk like this? Cause mm, this feels a little like, nah. This feels a little old man in the club and I think I know what's up. At times I, I was questioning like, are we in the 90s, possibly the 80s? And then it's like, oh yeah, we have cell phones and we're like on Instagram and liking people's content and worrying about like, I didn't get enough likes on this picture. Aside from that, the story, it's beautiful. It is a beautiful story. At the end of the book, the one thing, like going through the book as I'm reading it, one of the, the thing that really kept coming up in my head was this book is so tender. It has such a tender love story, tender family dynamics and connection, tender romance. It's just so many aspects of it that just felt tender and loving and caring cozy and like it's just beautiful like oh um, that is the one thing like i want to live and be as cozy and as as adorable and sweet and loving as they are in this book i want to have the the spaces the, the cozy spaces that they have in this book and just the moments that they have in this book. I think it's such a beautiful book. Because I did love how Black love, Black identity, Black friendships, interpersonal connections, all these stuff, like, it was just so beautiful and tender and loving and caring and just in this beautiful, glowing, you know, very beautiful depiction. Like, it's just amazing. I, I loved it. And one of the things that I really loved was the introduction of the book, the stars and the blackness between them being introduced into this book is kind of, kind of meta. And that opened up like a whole new other story that I was, in, I was intrigued and enthralled in. And that I want to know more about because I feel like there were certain things that were, there were a little few things that were left out, which I'm wondering like, was that left out? for us as readers of this book to read the stars and the blackness between them that's inside of this book, to be able to read that in the future, like Junata Petrus will come out and she will write that book. She'll give us that, like Afua's to stars and the blackness between them. Like, will she give us that book? Cause I'm actually curious about that book. I wanted to know some, some details, but then I'll, maybe that's the point of sharing what she shared in this book is that we don't need to know all of the details. I don't know, I still wanna know though, cause I'm a little nosy and I like, you know, to mind a little business every now and then, you know what I'm saying? And talking about Afua, I loved Afua's moments. I loved his moments. I actually am curious about Afua. I, it almost makes me wonder about like Afua 
is he a depiction of somebody in real life? Because he's reminding me of people that I've heard about in the news before in real life, but I don't know. I don't know. He seems familiar, but also some of the people that I'm thinking of in real life mm, are not... They... Mm, mm, let's not pass judgment, so I won't say anything. But either way, I loved Afua's parts, and I thought it, they were beautiful, and I thought that's this... His story was beautiful. There was like a lot of magical realism in this book. Some of these aspects that I'm now realizing are magical realism, I just thought were kind of normal and just a part of the story. Like, I just kind of just went with it. I went with it. And I think I went with it because a lot of it is like, it, it's, it's a connection to African spirituality and black spirituality and all that stuff. I'm like learning a little bit more about African spirituality, getting familiar with it. Not necessarily to be a part of or to practice these things because that comes with a lot of responsibility and understanding and respecting that culture. Just reading some of the magical realism that happened in this book, it just was like, okay, it is what it is. It's a part of our lives, and it's 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 a part of us as 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 black people. So it's like seeing them as black people experiencing that magic in their real lives, and it's just a part of their lives. I was just like, this is beautiful. That is so beautiful. And part of that magical realism, which was one of my favorite parts, was experiencing Queenie's youth. Those were the most authentic that the accent came across. Those were the times that it just transported me right back to Trinidad. And I was just like, yo, I'm up in the hills. I'm up in the hills in my grandmother's house. With my fit, what? With my cousin and all that. Like, I'm read it, like reading that part really connected with me. And when she beat up that boy and stuff like that. And that was another thing in reading that part. I did remember Sajid saying that like, I think he read ahead or he heard somebody else who'd read it before kind of say that there was kind of like discussions of like violence in Trinidad. There was something about violence in Trinidad, like Trinidad being very violent and somebody saying something really disparaging like that in the book. I don't know if that bit where Queenie was beating up this boy was that bit of viol was that bit of violence in Trinidad, but it's like mm, the way I'm thinking about violence is like, you know, gun toting people killing everybody all over the place kind of violence. I'm not thinking like a little fight in the yard kind of thing because that's the what the fight was. It was just like a little fight in the yard where Queenie's defending somebody else against a bully. The only set of real violence that I really saw, especially that happened in Trinidad, was maybe like, with Audrey's mother physically being violent to her. That was the thing, like this book was just so much of a love letter to Trinidad and about Trinidad. There were so many stories, like when Audrey's father was telling her about her mother before Audrey was born and like how they met and all that stuff. That moment in itself really showed me like, yo, this love for Trinidad is just poured into this book. There's so many moments that they're, they're talking about the food, they talk about polori, aloe pie, roti, uh, doubles. Oh my gosh, so much about doubles. What? Mm. I was just like, bitch, I want a doubles right now. They talked about the, uh, just like the island, the beauty, and the, what it's like to just live in Trinidad, just the beauty of it. For me, personally, it was just like so much love. Like, Audrey kept talking about how much she loved it, how much she missed Trinidad. Queenie talked about all the great aspects of being in Trinidad. All this love was just poured into Trinidad in this book. And it's also a love letter to Whitney Houston, in a way, because Whitney Houston was brought up in, in this a lot. There was a lot of information and talk about Whitney Houston in this book, and I was just like, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. It almost kind of makes me want to read that book by, like, Robin, her friend, growing up, her best friend, her... Mm, I feel like reading Robin's book now after reading like this because it's just so much love for Whitney Houston, so much cherishing of Whitney Houston. I also caught the little references to the internet, the Odd Future like R&B band. Although it wasn't them, it was kind of like a, a band that was very similar to 
the real life, the internet. I love that. I thought that was super cute. I thought that was super cool. I love that they had, like, the book had, like, a little playlist at the end with songs by the internet on it. A Whitney Houston song, a Rihanna song, a Jonelle Monet song, a Frank Ocean song. So many great songs are on here. Like, it's a cute playlist. Like, that would be amazing to just create that little playlist on Spotify and listen to it and get the vibe that this book is giving. It's only now that I'm like talking about the book and thinking about the ending, I'm realizing that. The ending, it was kind of a little bit foretold and it was just like a lot of little things are kind of leading up to it. I just didn't realize it. Cause I'm just like thinking like, I'm just, there was still hope. I just still had hope. And then it's like, turn to the next chapter and I was just like, oh my gosh, that's what happened. Like, what's going on over here? You know, I just wanted the best for all the characters. I think actually the best happened in the end. And it was just, this, I don't know. I love this book. I enjoyed it. I think it was an amazing book. Despite my feelings about the accent, I had issues with that accent, child. Reading it, I'm scared to even listen to this on audiobook because I know I feel like it's going it's going to be shambles because they because whoever's reading it is not going to take out the eyes like I am going to take out the eyes in this book. They're just going to read it as is and I'll be disgusted. I wanted to share a quote. I'm sure if I reread this, I will find even more that I didn't catch the first read. But I just love this moment here, which was Afua. The blackness between the stars is the melanin in your skin. I read it in a book. I take it to mean that as black folks, we are limitless. That maybe our blackness holds our ancient cosmic memory. What if our wisdom can come from our dreams, not just churches and Bibles? I always love the stars. The stars and the blackness between them is the melanin in my skin. That was one of my favorite lines and just like the very roll credits moment of like the book. It was just such a beautiful sentiment. It's just so real, like connecting us as black people to the stars and to greatness and to limitlessness. I don't know, I just thought that was beautiful. Like a lot of the writing in this book is beautiful. Aside from Audrey's accent. Overall, I enjoyed it so much and I definitely would look forward to reading another Janata Petrus book, even with a Trinidad accent that I would just be looking at with like huge side eyes, like, uh. But besides that, I do think this book is beautiful and it is a classic as far as I'm concerned. It is a instant classic as far as I am concerned. Just drop the I is. And we good, just drop the is is in some of those, like they're extraneous. Maybe throw a little mother fat up in there, you know. I love that she threw in like, you know, hot, big hot back man and Jagabat and all these like very, and your fast and all that stuff. Just very Trinidadian colloquialisms, Trinidadian slang, just a Trinidadian way of speaking. I love that and I appreciated that so much. So comment if you've read this book, if you enjoyed it, didn't enjoy it. If you got accent, if you didn't have a problem with it, if you didn't know anything about the accent or anything, like just comment and we could we could chit chat in the comments about this book. You know what I'm saying? But thank you for spending your time with me. And I'm out this bitch like fleek the fuck.